What's going on guys, your boy Amazing, we're back with another video, and in today's video guys, we're going to be going over why Zeldris will be the next week's banner. Um, so actually, the next banner we actually get on Global will be Zeldris banner, um, and actually going over basically everything you need to know about the Zeldris banner itself. So let's get into the video. Before we actually hop into the video, make sure to subscribe to your boy Amazing. We are on the road to 10k subscribers, and at the time of recording this video, I'm at 8.83k subscribers on the YouTube channel. Turn on post notifications if you want to stay up to date with anything 7 Deadly Sins Grand Cross related. And with that out of the way, let's hop into the video. Alright, so as you guys know, Executioner Zeldris, the Festival Zeldris, will be dropping upcoming um, next week on the global version of the game. And it only makes sense because we don't have many units that JP has that we don't yet. Um, so I'll actually just show you guys the characters that we are missing. We're missing Arthur, we're missing Chandler, and we are missing... Zeldris down here so we're only missing three characters from the JP version of the game if you actually think about it we're only missing three characters Arthur Lily just came out on JP we have all the collab heroes we've gotten all of them now ReZero has come out on global so we have caught up uh, in terms of collabs and so now it's just Arthur and Festival of Zeldris banner and Zeldris's banner is actually going to be dropping on the following Tuesday so if today is the 18th um, Zeldris should be dropping on the 24th or the 25th of next week so that is just something to note right there um he will definitely be coming next week um and the reason for that is just because they don't have any other characters they can slot there unless they want to drop arthur early and give us more time to save for zeldris but i just feel like they're definitely going to drop zeldris early because they said they were going to follow the you know the global or the jp schedule so uh, i definitely think that they're going to drop zeldris next week so let's actually go over Zeldris and Chandler, right, as units. Um, and then we'll actually go over their banner briefly and letting you guys know um, how good the banner is going to be um, for, like, a free-to-play player's perspective and uh, if it's actually worth summoning on. So let's just hop into Zeldris here. So we have Zeldris. Um, this is the unit right here. And another thing to note as well, I'll actually just pull up this website. Um, for the CC ranking, Zeldris is actually very high. Just, just something to note. So Zeldris is actually 4th highest CC unit in the entire game, by the way, um, with level 90. So that's something to take into account. Also, Chandler is in the top 10 as well with 29,500. He's also missing um, an outfit uh, as well. Zeldris, I think, is uh, missing, I think, a weapon, if I'm not mistaken, or a headpiece. One of the two. Um, but Zeldris is definitely missing a piece. Chandler is missing a headpiece, which would bump him up a little bit more. Uh, but that's just something to note that they're really high CC units right now. So uh, just take that into account. Zeldris right here, his first skill is going to inflict cut damage equal to 500% of attack that cannot be a critical strike on one enemy. Um, cut damage is an additional damage equal to 50% of 100% of the critical damage. So basically how that cut, wor uh, cut card works is because Zeldris has 185% critical damage, half of this critical damage will be applied onto his card. So if he is 185, I think, what is that, 97%? If I'm not, no, I don't think it's, okay, not 97, it's like 90 or maybe 87 percent no not 92 percent something like that okay regardless cut the, take this number and cut it in half that is the amount of bonus that Zeldris is going to get in terms of damage on this cut card this cut card can also not crit on the enemy so it's guaranteed not to crit um but it is beneficial that way because the whole point of the card is to boost damage for not critting so that's pretty good right there and then his second card here is gonna is just gonna be a dissolve card that doesn't actually need to be um, a damaging card. It actually just applies on the enemy. So if a Goss Elizabeth puts up a shield, you can still apply this dissolve effect, which is very good. And I think this is like super good support for the assault Meliodas team, right? So depletes one gauge on rank one, right? You know, uh, on the enemy's turn, does not apply any damage. Just depletes the ultimate move gauge, depletes two, and also disables ultimate moves for one turn, and then depletes two and disables ultimate moves for uh, two turns. So this actually can stop the purse. Uh, the enemy from getting the ultimate their turn and also disable it you know um so make sure that they get their ultimate dissolve which is very very good i think that's like another um really good thing about zeldris there is that he's a super good support for Salmo meliotis and also just in terms of uh debuff teams which will actually go over his passive he's very good for that as well um for his passive increases allies basic stats by two percent for every debuff applied on the enemies limit 10 times so as you guys can see Every time there's a debuff on the enemy, you're going to be increasing your basic stats by 2% for all your allies as well. And this does work from the backline, if I'm not mistaken, because I do remember people running this in the backline and it working, um, which is very good. So Zeldris can be a backline support on a debuff team. Like if you're running like Keo or something, he could be very good. 
So uh, yeah, that's just another thing to know about Zeldris. And then for his commandment, it's actually different from the other Zeldrises. It's not the same, even though it is the same commandment. Um, first commandment here, if a critical strike occurs from the skill used, decreases the crit chance and crit damage by 10%. Applies to both allies and enemies entering battle, excludes deathmatch limit three times. The thing with this uh, commandment here is it's actually a great debuff. So the moment it applies on the, on the enemy or you, you actually cannot cleanse it, which is something to note right there, right? Um, if you are running Zeldris' commandment with assault mode, it's going to kind of cuck assault mode because he's going to do less damage on his crits, which is kind of like this whole kit is not based around crits, but um, a lot of his damage does come from his crits, right? So that's just something to note. Um, most likely, you do not want to run uh, Zeldris' commandment on his team, um, but that is just something to uh, take note about. And then for his ultimate here, he's going to inflict damage equal to 630% of attack on one enemy, decreases HP related stats of all enemies by 5% for two turns, and the multiplier scales up to 945% of attack at 6 out of 6, um, with the debuff multiplier itself going up to 15% uh, HP related down, which is super good, man. Like, HP related down is, is just super good because you lower their lifesteal, you lower their HP itself, you also lower the recovery related um, and uh, regeneration rate uh, stats as well. So, not too bad right there. I'd say Zeldris overall as a unit, he's a very, very good support unit, um, being that he has the uh, Dissolve here, and he also has the Cut card, which is not too bad as well. And then, uh, yeah, you know, he does uh, pretty good damage on his ult, also applying HP related down, um, and his passive is very good as well for a debuff team. So, Zeldris is a very good unit if you do plan on pulling for him. Chandler, on the other hand, is also a very good unit as well, and he can be very broken on the Tarmiel. Um, Esterosa team as well, um, just because, you know, he, he's just cracked. He actually is just cracked. And, you, and the thing is, too, you don't even have to run Esterosa anymore because you could just run Green Gother, Chandler, and Tarmiel, and then just run Esterosa backline. And you could have the uh, debuff immunity on the counters that Chandler and uh, Tarmiel are going to provide, um, which is very good. Spoiler alert, Chandler does have a uh, counter here. Um, but for his first card, it's going to be the same as Mark II Valenti's, where it restricts all skill effects, including ultimate move effects for one turn, excludes stances and recovery skills. So this actually stops any ultimate in the game that isn't a recovery or stance related ultimate, which is very good. I think Chandler, because of this card, is able to kind of, you know, stop people from um, doing their shenanigans if they're trying to drop the Dissolve, if they're trying to drop a, uh, you know, an Essen or Influx card, if they're trying to drop a Amplify card with Assault Mode, you can stop that effect um, right here with the Dragon Claw card. And then his second card here is going to be his full counter card, which assumes a stance uh, for one turn, which counters enemies and inflicts damage equal to 200% of attack when taking attacks, inflicts an additional 50% of the damage taken, um, or uh, equal to the 50% of the damage taken, which, you know, is not too bad. Scales up from uh, 200 to 300 and then uh, 70%, and then 450% at 6 out of 6, or at uh, rank 3, and then 100% uh, 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 equal to damage for the damage taken, so... Um, yeah, and then for his ultimate here, he's going to inflict charge damage equal to 455% of attack on all enemies. And then this can scale to 683% of attack at 6 out of 6. And then for his passive here, which I think is one of the most important things about Chandler, is he decreases all stats of the enemy who use a skill by 7% for one turn in PvP. So this works, by the way, on any skill in the entire game. If you use a stance skill with Esterosa, you're getting, you're losing 7% stats. If you use a rank up with Gother, you're losing 7% stats. If you do a Escanor attack card, you're losing 7% stats. And it is a great debuff as well, so it cannot be cleansed. So that is just something to take note. Chandler is very good because of his passive and because of his whole kit here. Um, he's also very beefy as I showed on the CC rankings here. Both Zeldris and Chandler are in the top 10 for CC, which is very good if you're trying to go first. Um, also, Assault Mode is on that as well. So you have three units, if you were to run this team, three units that are, are on the Assault Mode team that are really, really high base CC. Um, so that's something to know right there. But yeah, now that we've gone over both the units, let's actually just go over the banner pretty briefly. Um, so we have the banner right here. This is what's going to look like on Global, unless they change up something, which for the better, I would hope that they actually change the commandments here um, from the summonable commandments to the action to the coin shop commandments, because I feel like those are more valuable um, in terms of for a free to play player than the summonable ones. But these are the summonable, summonable uh, 10 commandments there. Um, but yeah, so for the uh, rate up, we have the Executioner Zeldris, Fast Limited, 0.25%, um, uh, Magician Chandler, 0.25%, and then we have Assault Mode Meliodas, which is also featured on the banner at a 0.25% rate up. Um, and then the rest of the banner is going to be 0.1625%. Uh, um, we have the Nashi, Liz, uh, Green Arthur, Ludociel. We have all the Summonable Ten Commandments, so basically all of them, um, if you guys already know. 
And then we have, uh, I think, the Coin Shop Sins, if I'm not mistaken. These definitely are the Coin Shop Sins, yep. So, uh, Coin Shop Sins, Summonable Commandments, and then a bunch of not too bad filler, because we have Ludosia, Liz, and Nanashi, which are not bad. And also Green Arthur as well, he's a very good unit. So, overall, the banner isn't too crazy, um, as you guys can see here. And the rate up percent on 4% rate is only 0.75%. So, that is something to take note when, uh, when you're actually summoning on this banner. For it being rate up, it's actually just not rate up. It, it's actually just not. Um, you have a 0.25% chance of pulling either a uh, Berserk Meliodas, um, Executioner Zeldris, or Magician Chandler, though, which is not too bad. I um, mean, a total of 0.75%, which is about, if you think about it, a little bit less than 25% chance on an SSR pull to get one of the featured units, which does kind of suck um, in total, really, but uh, it's not too bad, right? So yeah, if you plan on something on this banner, I would only do it if you want to invest in the Assault Melee team, because both these units are kind of meant for that. Um, but they do have other uses as well. Chandler can be run with the Tarmiel team, as I explained. And then Zeldris can also be run on debuff teams. But generally, you're going to be running these units on the Assault Mode team. So if you are planning on summoning on this banner, make sure you are summoning on it because you invested in the Assault Melee team. So that is just something to note right there. Other than that, the filler on the banner isn't too great. You know, if you don't have Coin Shop Sins all 6 out of 6 yet, not too bad. And then also the Summonable Commandments as well. If you don't have them 6 6, it's also not uh, that bad as well. Um, but overall, I'd say it's not too good for free to play. And if you don't invest in Assault Mode Meliodas, I would definitely say skip the banner. Um, if you do pl plan on investing in Assault Mode Meliodas in the future, then Zeldris is not a bad pickup. So that's basically going to be it for my video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe as always. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, definitely let me know in the comment section below. And I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Peace out and have a great rest of your day.